This episode of Max Scoville's Study Hall is brought to you by Gamefly. Today's study hall is coming to you from the dark side of the moon where everything's all cell shaded and weird looking. And also, I'm a gigolo, cause video games. Hello, hello, and welcome once again to Max Scoville's Study Hall. I am your host, Max Scoville, and if you're new, Study Hall is the show where I take a video game or video games and then run down a bunch of other pop culture media that I think would go well with it. Bear in mind, this show isn't a definitive guide or a top 10 list. It is just me recommending some stuff to you guys to broaden your horizons. Today's topic is Killer is Dead, which is the latest from Goichi Suda, aka Suda51, who is the Japanese game designer behind cult classic games like No More Heroes, Lollipop Chainsaw, and Shadows of the Damned. And Killer is Dead looks to be something of a stylistic return to 2005's Killer7, which was the first game by Suda51 to get released outside of Japan. Like a lot of video games, simply describing the plot and mechanics doesn't really do the actual experience justice, and trying to put Suda51's games in a nutshell either makes them sound really generic, Shadows of the Damned is about a dude trying to rescue his kidnapped girlfriend from demons, or they sound completely batshit insane. Lollipop Chainsaw is about a sexy cheerleader who's running around killing zombies with a chainsaw while talking to her boyfriend's decapitated head, which is hanging off of her skirt. But the games themselves have amassed a rather sizable hardcore fan base for being refreshingly unique and experimental compared to most of the other big budget titles out there. Now, Killer is Dead follows a dude named Mondo Zappa, who's a cyborg executioner whose day job is killing off superpowered bad guys for a government agency. Oh, and he happens to moonlight as a gigolo who wears x ray glasses, so he can see ladies in their underpants. It's hard to say what drives Suda51 to make games the way he does, but he definitely doesn't work in a vacuum, and he's clearly a voracious consumer of all sorts of pop culture, and he has no qualms about drawing from unusual places. I mean, in interviews about Killer is Dead, he mentioned that Transformers Dark of the Moon got him thinking about what's out there on the other side of the moon, and apparently Killer is Dead involves evil moon beings coming to Earth. Honestly, I probably would have given Pink Floyd credit over Michael Bay, but hey, whatever gets the gears turning. Now, the moon isn't the only thing that Killer is Dead wants to show us the darker side of. Suda's compared Mondo Zappa to a darker James Bond, presumably since his day job involves killing people for a government agency, and there's an inherent moral issue that kind of comes along with that. Of course, this begs the question of which James Bond? Six actors have played the famous spy over the last 50 years in movie form, each one portraying the character somewhat differently. The books, meanwhile, leave a certain amount of interpretation up to the reader. Uh, like a lot of people, I grew up watching the James Bond movies on TV, but it wasn't until a few years ago that I got around to actually checking the books out, and holy hell, they are fun. While the Bond movies of the 60s and 70s probably get a little bit too campy with the source material, I would say that the newer, gritty Daniel Craig reboots weren't quite campy enough, so if you're looking for an extremely good time, I would recommend reading Ian Fleming's classic spy novels. Casino Royale is the first Bond novel, and the 2006 movie stayed pretty faithful. Meanwhile, Quantum of Solace uh, wasn't remotely based on anything, aside from taking its title from a 007 short story, the entirety of which consists of a guy at a dinner party telling James Bond about his failed marriage. I mean, it's a good story, but it's possibly the least thrilling thing Ian Fleming ever wrote. Anyway, my point is, if you've seen Casino Royale, you can probably skip reading it. But the second book, Live and Let Die, is a great place to start with James Bond, and it gets way more gruesome and explicit than they were allowed to get with the movie adaptation, which was the eighth movie in the series, and really falls flat compared to the book. It's also probably worth mentioning that the James Bond books were written in the 50s, and they are really, really politically incorrect. I'm talking, like, racially offensive, extremely sexist, they hate communists. I mean, you know, just bear that in mind. Anyway, getting back to Killer is Dead, as I mentioned, the hero's name is Mondo Zappa. Suda's used a character named Mondo before in his 2001 game Flower, Sun, and Rain. And while the characters do bear a resemblance, they don't really seem to be related. The word Mondo is also Italian for world, and in the 60s, there were documentaries made that were kind of like exploitative documentaries that were sort of supposed to show different cultures, but they were basically like old school reality TV. The name Zappa, on the other hand, comes from the late Frank Zappa, who, in my ever-so-humble opinion, is one of the most criminally underrated performers in rock and roll history. It's not much of a surprise to hear that Suda51 is a Frank Zappa fan, as Zappa's work is also known for being shamelessly bizarre and experimental, with an apparent indifference to its critical or commercial reception. His music combined elements of jazz, rhythm and blues, classical and rock, not to mention his weird, hilarious, and often controversial, and sometimes just downright gross lyrics. Along with his band, The Mothers of Invention, the dude put out 94 studio albums, many of which he produced and made the artwork for himself. Because he was so prolific, finding a good place to start with Zappa can be a little bit tough, and some of his work is less accessible than others, but hey, that's why I'm here. His albums Apostrophe, Overnight Sensation, and Chic Your Booty are all really solid records and will give you something of an idea of what Zappa was all about. If you want a compilation, I was first exposed to Zappa with his greatest hits album, Strictly Commercial, at the tender age of nine, which, in retrospect, kind of explains a lot. 
Suda51 has stated numerous times that music is one of his biggest influences when making games. In fact, the title Killer Is Dead is a play on the name of the British pop band The Smiths' third album, The Queen Is Dead, and that's one of the many Smiths references that Suda has thrown into his games. The titular Seven Assassins and Killer Seven all have the last name Smith, thus making them the Smiths, or the Seven Deadly Smiths, and each of the Courier memos in the game have the name of a Smith song in them. So if you're trying to get inside Suda 51's head, you could do a lot worse than to get into the Smiths, and if you're into Killer is Dead, why not go check out Queen is Dead in the meantime? I realize I'm jumping around a bit this episode, but it kind of goes with the territory, and there's definitely a lot to work with. If you're looking for some more fast-paced, assassin-related stuff, which didn't necessarily influence Suda, uh, a must-watch is John Woo's 1989 action movie The Killer, which has inspired numerous action directors and helped launch John Woo from Hong Kong cinema to Hollywood. Plus, it's got Chow Yun-Fat jumping around shooting people and stuff, and tons of blood everywhere, so why wouldn't you like it? As for assassin-related comic books that have a very similar aesthetic visual style to Killer is Dead, well, obviously there is Sin City by Frank Miller, which are a lot of fun. I'm guessing we've all seen the movies, but if you're looking for a comic that gets way more batshit insane, check out Helen Back. It gets really weird, like, like Rambo and Captain America show up for a second. It's, it's a strange comic. Another series to look into is 100 Bullets by Brian Azzarello and Eduardo Riso. The hook is pretty simple. Seemingly random individuals are approached and offered a handgun, 100 bullets, and documentation proving that a particular person is responsible for something that's wrong in their life. So do they get the chance to take some revenge, or do they take the high road? 100 Bullets ran from 1999 to 2009 and went for 100 issues, appropriately enough, which have since been collected into nine trade paperbacks, which are easy to find at most bookstores or comic shops. Now, in spite of the name suggesting otherwise, Killer is Dead isn't just violence and bloodshed, it's also about sexing out with the ladies. Oh yes. But yeah, seriously, there are, there are gigolo missions where you basically go on dates with women and then, for whatever reason, you have x-ray glasses. Because, like I said, video games. Uh, but yeah, they didn't have x-ray glasses in 1980, but that didn't stop Richard Gere from getting his sex on in American Gigolo. Oh no. He did have gravity boots, though, so there's that. Anyway, American Gigolo is about a male escort named Julian who gets tangled up in a murder plot. And as goofy as I make it sound, it's actually a serious crime drama by Paul Schrader, who also wrote Taxi Driver and Raging Bull. And the soundtrack features my favorite synth composer, Giorgio Moroder, collaborating with Blondie's Debbie Harry on the now classic track, Call Me. Guys, I'll be honest, this is a particular tough episode to do. Uh, Suda51's influences come from all over the place, and on top of that, he's also a very creative dude who isn't afraid to try new things. So, if you haven't already, why not just go check out some of his other games? Using Gamefly, perhaps? Oh, look at that. I have a mansion now. Video games are expensive, whether they're old or new, and tracking down the old ones can actually be kind of a hassle, but with Gamefly, that is just not the case. Gamefly is the largest online game rental service with a library of over 8,000 titles to choose from, new and old, like I said, across a variety of consoles. You want to familiarize yourself with Suda51's other games? Well, Lollipop Chainsaw? Check. Shadows of the Dam? Check. No More Heroes 1, 2, and the HD Collection? Triple check. And oh yeah, they also have Killer7, released back in 2005. Now the question is, do you still have your PS2 or GameCube hooked up? On top of that, they even have all of the DS games Suda51 has made. Gamefly plans start at $15.95 a month, and you can rent up to four games at a time. Keep them as long as you want. There are no late fees, no due dates, and all the shipping is totally free. And if you're crazy about the game that you rent it, you can just go to the Gamefly website and push on a button that says keep it, and it's yours for a discounted price, and they'll even send you the case and manuals free of charge. And PC gamers get a deal, too, with the unlimited PC play plan, which is hard to say, but it's exactly what it sounds like. To get a free trial membership, and more importantly, help support Max Scoville's study hall, head to Gamefly.com slash study hall and sign up today. Look at that, they gave me my own URL, how cool is that? Gamefly.com slash study hall. Jeepers, that has such a nice ring to it. Alright, that's about all the time we have for today. I, I love you guys for watching my dumb show where I talk about Gigolos and Frank Zappa. Are any of you guys hardcore Suda51 fans who want to chime in with some recommendations to a company Killer is Dead? I didn't even mention any anime. How did I screw that one up? Uh, hop in the comments and holler at me on Twitter. Go find me on Tumblr. Uh, write meaningless hashtags on my Instagrams. Go downvote my Reddit comment. Fave star my BuzzFeeds. Even better, come say hello in person at PAX. Rev3 Games is going to be doing a panel on Sunday at 8 p.m. in the Pegasus Theater, and I will be walking the show floor all four days, having amazing hair, and being almost seven feet tall, so I'm pretty easy to spot. Thank you guys for watching my silly show. I really appreciate it. There's the bell. Next week, we're going to kick ass, chew bubble gum, and talk about Duke Nukem. Until then, a gentleman never kisses and tells, or wears x-ray glasses on a date, because that's pervy.